So hello everyone and welcome to another video. How is everyone doing and how's the start of your weekend? Well, in today's video, we managed to create a very fun game where we were playing with our new rune setup, Unsealed Spellbook, and I mixed it with a very old Volibear build that includes Stridebreaker and mainly tank bruiser items like Hullbreaker, Starax Gauge, and so on. This playstyle is high-paced, where you focus on ganking and getting most of your gold from successful ganks and objective control. It's a really fun playstyle because, as I mentioned in my previous video with Volibear, I don't feel like I need a rune to fight, so I compensate for the rune with strategic calls and advantages in gold. In other words, instead of having a rune that gives you damage in fights, you already have the damage through your items. Of course, if you're behind, nothing will be useful, even if you have a rune. Always remember that if you're playing from behind, no matter what you have, you're useless unless you're actively making use of whatever items or skills you possess. In this game, we managed to succeed in ganking mid lane, which is rare. And we also managed to succeed in top side, even though our allies started flaming each other at the three minute mark around the second wave. Both bot lane players were baby raging at each other. So I flamed them both back and it turned out to be effective. I said, hey guys, I truly don't care about any of you. We have 20 minutes together as a team. Play accordingly. I don't care who made the mistake. No one cares. Just do your role as you're supposed to. They kept arguing for like a minute, then went silent. The game continued as intended. Mid lane was decent, while top lane was scared of Kled, which is understandable since Kled is his counterpick. The secret behind why we went with this build is that I know Evelyn is a tough matchup for Volibear. Not because you can't win a one versus one, but because it's similar to facing Nocturne, Kane, Kha'Zix, or Rengar. Every assassin jungler, based on my experience, wins in the long run against bruisers in the jungle because they have the advantage of being able to kill your entire team before the fight even starts. Unlike Volibear. I've never played Volibear as an assassin type where you build around items like the Collector and others that give you instant damage with your Q and ultimate. You would need to match your ultimate with your Q to land your damage while they're stunned. It's a high skill combo. And if you're like me, coming to play League after a long day at work, you've left that skill with your boss, buried in paperwork. So yeah, we come here to enjoy the game with whatever little energy we have left and maybe come up with a good strategy to make it all work. So now we went from losing the game, well, actually not losing because I was the only one winning while everyone else was feeding, mostly on bot side, to winning by a large margin. Of course, luck played a huge role. Every gank was successful, Every summoner spell swap was useful. There was a moment where I didn't get barrier but ended up with ignite to kill the enemy running around with 100 HP. Whenever we needed damage, I had ignite. Whenever we needed utility, I had heal. Whenever we were getting dived, I had barrier. And when the enemy team had their summoner spells, I had my flash and ghost ready. So yeah, this game was lucky, and the team also managed to play accordingly to every call. Whenever we needed to group and deal damage, I found that the team were working well together, playing around me. Top lane, as always, was very calm, which is crucial for every top laner. A top laner needs to be the backbone of the team. In other words, even if the top lane is losing, it's not like they're feeding, they're absorbing the enemy's pressure. Of course, they wouldn't flame because I was doing great work ganking, securing objectives, and camping bot side. But usually, since he's on the losing end of a counterpick, I don't think he believed that even with my help, he'd be able to get anything out of it. So, he let us do whatever we could to make the game playable for everyone. Regarding the enemy team, they had this sick combo. They had a two-phase engage where Kled would go in first, and if things went south, Galio would follow up. In the midst of that fight, they had three cleanup champions, Pike, Evelyn, and Jin who could pick off kills with their long range or execute abilities. So yeah, the enemy team had a solid combo. On the other hand, we didn't have any synergy whatsoever. We were just five random dudes like characters in a generic isekai movie with no real synchronicity. But still, the only good thing about this game that I can confidently share with you is that every call I made felt like the right call. And that's rare. It's almost impossible to make two consecutive correct calls in a game. 
Why? Because team mentality plays a part, and you can't control your team. You can influence them, manipulate them, but you can't make them follow your every command. But still, as the game progressed, we gained a huge advantage. Our pressure was unmatched, and the enemy team couldn't split push. I managed to hold the front line, even though I wasn't properly built for it. I was playing more as an off-tank bruiser. But if left unchecked, my damage output was huge compared to any other champion on our team. Well, this is the last play of the game, and we managed to close it out with the teleport, just as planned from the start. We did lose Baron because Evelyn is broken, and it's hard to outsmite her. But still, even though their player got Baron, they lost the game. Ironically, the whole point of getting Baron was to end the game, but it turned out that them getting Baron actually helped us win instead. And with that, my dear viewers, our time together comes to an end. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, leave a comment, and hit that like button to support the channel. As always, until the next video, take care everyone, have a great day, and peace.